Welcome back to Classic Britain. Sorry if I sound a bit uh, disheartened and depressed, it's because I am. Uh, David pops over all the time, and uh, as you noticed in the last video, it was burning an awful lot of oil. We thought, well, it could just probably just a stuck piston ring, um, hasn't run in ages, maybe burning a bit of brake fluid, something like that, you know, not a big deal. Um, me and David unanimously decided that when he was next in the area, we drain a, a litre or so out of it um, of oil because it was reading way, 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 way too full. Um, we just assumed that uh, there was too much oil in it. Uh, no. No. That uh, was not the reason why at all. About 30 minutes ago, we drained, I took the oil drain plug off, and uh, what we found was about the worst thing you could possibly find. So, let's just roll the clip. You'll probably notice the uh, reduction in quality. That's because I'm having to do this on my phone. I can't physically fit the big camera under here. Um, it's a small camera, so it isn't that big, but it's just very tall and there's not enough room. Um, very, very bad news. I undid this and something that looked like water came out. Um, so I'm going to film this and yeah, we're going to see what, what's actually in this engine. Oh no. What the hell is that? That... Oh my... Jesus. Oh crap. Crap, 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 crap. It's in, it's in. It's in. Oh my god. That was horrific. Holy. I got that all on video. Jesus. Holy hell. Okay. That is bad. That is really bad. Yeah. This engine is toast. Uh, not only was there a lot of water in it, uh, there's significant amounts of metal debris in the oil as well. And we'll pan round to David, who is still here. I'm still here. Isn't this good? That's uh, not the best afternoon ever in the history of the universe, starting from creation and Adam and Eve. Uh, no, not the best. But what can one do? Well, nothing. One purchases these uh, these items and hopes that they're good, but once in a while, they're not. I mean, the car's really good. There's no rot on it or anything. It's a good car. It just doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's definitely not going anywhere. <laughs> we'll go around the front here and have a look. Um, now the colour of the oil is a bit darker than it should be, but it's still a bit browny, so that's not really bad, is it? It's just the fact that when you run your hands along the bottom, it's like <laughs> sifting through stones in a fish tank. <laughs> um, it is very odd, actually, because I was actually offered a 4.6 engine um, from a lovely chap called Kevin um, with really low miles, 27,000, um, for a really good deal. And I was like, well, I won't need it. Mm. <laughs> Enter 3.9. Mm. Well, on the bright side of things, it'll be a bigger engine. It will. 4.6. And I have a stroker crank, 4.8. Uh, your axle's never going to stand it. And I have turbos and nitrous and... <laughs> <laughs> Let's go off into mad rambling. Yeah, I'm not happy. Uh, the guy I bought it off didn't know. Um, he didn't have it running, so he wouldn't have known. Um, yeah, obviously when these things sit for years and years and years, it can happen. Uh, how do you think, because the head gasket's a bit rotted, obviously. Uh, more than likely. How does that happen, just water ingress? Well, when did it last have, have any water in it? That's the thing. Well, I don't even know. I've got no idea. Yeah, it's all... Build-up of condensation. You think? No. 
Not, not that amount. So essentially, we'll never know. Ah, it's odd. There shouldn't be that much in there. But there was. <laughs> Got to be a water leak of some kind, and it can only be head gasket. Mm -hmm. For the, yeah, you know, for that amount. But I don't, I don't think it ever had the radiator plumbed in. Well, it must have done it at some stage. Must have. Oh, well, yeah. I don't I know. So. Fortunately, because it's mostly in bits anyway, <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not going to be that bad to take it apart. Um, the cost of rebuilding the engine would be significantly more than just replacing it. Um, I mean, you know, new bearings there, hundreds. Got all your gaskets. You'd easily be in about be six, seven hundred quid. No problem to rebuild it because obviously if you're going to take it apart you might as well just go you know if you've got the heads off and everything you might as well just do the whole thing so you're just better off buying another engine aren't you just swapping it out it is a really shitty piece of news but there's really nothing that can be done other than to just bite the bullet and swap the engine um one thing that is going to be annoying is the oil lines to the zf gearbox we'll have to blank them off or something or maybe just drain the oil out, which is probably more likely what we're going to have to do. Okay, yeah. um, where is the dipstick for the gearbox anyway, the ZF? No idea. Nobody knows. have to ask the person who built it. No, ask Reg. Mm. And he'll say, I've forgotten. I haven't looked at it for so long. Well, I don't even know if the gearbox has got oil in it. Nobody knows. No. I know it sounds stupid. Um, Mm. It sounds it sounds silly, but um, the car will be worth it. I mean, there's no rot at all. I'd rather have... I mean, obviously, I don't want this situation, but I'd rather have an engine needing changing than a car full of rust. I mean, David's been there, haven't you? Remember? Do you remember that kitten engine we took apart and it was like a milkshake inside? Ah, that was lovely, wasn't it? It's not nice little engine. Yeah. But, yeah, it's all... Well, ha happens occasionally. These things happen. Uh, Nothing that can be done. Easier to change an engine than to spend years welding. Mm. Have that engine out in no time. Yeah, all we do is just cut the front of the car off and. That would be the quickest. Yeah. <laughs> with a disc cutter and yeah. weld it back on crooked so it. Weld it off, yeah. yeah. Or just not have it on at all. Air cooled, yeah. drill some holes in the block for air cooling. Yeah. Don't bother. Just cut the whole front off. Yeah. Easy maintenance. It'd be easier than a beetle to change. Yeah. That would be good. I'd approve of that. Yeah. All joking aside, it's not going to be that bad to do. Um, just radiator out. Um, they, a lot of people say that it's easier to take it all out in one unit, but we don't really need to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Gonna have to take off the, oh God, that's gonna be a pain. Take off these manifolds, lovely stainless steel manifolds. Mm -hmm. And with a new engine, they'll be too small. No, they won't. They well be. Nah, people run these on, um, run the four sixes on stock exhaust manifolds. Mm -hmm. Those are the largest you can get in that space. Mm -hmm. Reg actually had two sets and he sold the second set to, um, Really nice chap I know called Furious Driving. He's got a 4.6 in his. Mm -hmm. But because he wanted to run the original P6 belt, he has the P6 front cover on it. Mm. But the Serpentine's better belt, really. I don't, I, don't like I don't like these serpents hissing around. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we can do is laugh. There's nothing else we can do. Except kick this car to death. Die, die, die. Yeah. Yeah, this is really bad news. It's the serpent in the serpentine has killed it. <laughs> the, the evil yeah. evil engine snake. Yeah. You saw it come out the crawl, it crawl out of the sump there, didn't you? I did, Slivered yeah. out of there. Yeah. Little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> the devil gets everywhere. Mm. Even in your sump. Should we? We should make a film called "The Devil The Devil Drives Rover" instead of "The Devil Wears Prada." <laughs> you should 
take that engine to the Catholic Church to be exercised. <laughs> just just dump it on the doorstep. <laughs> All the oil will just flow out. <laughs> Run quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's an idea for you. That's a good afternoon's entertainment now. Mm, not for me. Go on now. Go on. Yeah. Mm. On the plus side, I've decided to keep the leather oh. because no one seems to afford can afford it. <laughs> well, they're expensive. Yeah. They're like three grand to get a set done now, and I said two, yeah. which I think was fair. No interest. Well, there was interest. People just couldn't afford it. Yeah. People aren't spending the money anymore. But there we are. Right. Well, I don't think there's anything else we can address. Oh, oh, I just realised something. We will have to run a holly. Because they're, they're not going to, that's not going to fuel it enough, is it? Well, I was looking at the intake manifolds and they're bloody £500. Get a cheap one from somewhere. Mm. Well, there are SU converted ones that are about 200 quid. They're not great, but it'll be better than nothing. It's going to cost me over a grand to do all this. Eight SUs. Eight SUs. I was thinking, actually. Do you think the boxer man? I don't know if the I don't think the boxer manifold will cure, clear the bonnet because that's the cheapest option. Because I have a bunch of SUs in my unit, so if we got a boxer manifold, we could in fact run four SUs, couldn't we? I have a I have a bonnet in the garden we could cut a hole in. Just a, a standard one. And poke out a bit. Yeah. It would work and it would be cheaper. Cause the box of manifolds and carbs are like they're quite a lot of money. Yeah. You think that might be a good route to go? Might be. Might be a cheaper way to do it. Well we're not we're not going <laughs> we're not going Webers. <laughs> Listen, they look great, they sound great, but I've never met anyone who has on a road car who isn't constantly adjusting them. At least when you get the SUs right, they, you, they stay there. Yeah. Well, you getting them, getting them right is quite a fight. Ha! <laughs> getting them right is quite a fight. He's a poet and he didn't even know it. But he did. Really he, he did really know. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching this, albeit very depressing video. And a like and subscribe. If any of you need P6 parts, please comment down below. I need the cash right now, clearly. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Ooh, I nearly forgot. That reminds me. I've got my really nice cylinder heads in the house I could finally put on. Yes. Shout out to my friend Lee, who sold me those heads for 200 quid. Biggest valves you can get in a stock rover casting. I want to port the I want to port the um ports though. Carry on. Mm. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and uh like, subscribe, comment down below. If any of you need parts, do comment because it's gonna take me a while to raise the money to do this. And I'm not gonna ask for handouts. But there we are. Thanks for watching and bye for now. <laughs>